Hi, Sean Higgins here. Can you refinance with a state tax lien on a property or on your property? All of this we're gonna cover and a lot more. I want you to think about this for a minute. In this process, we're gonna show you why tax liens, state or otherwise, don't necessarily prevent you from doing this. I'm gonna walk you step by step, not only the reason why that is the case, but actually how to do that and make it so that you and your family can get to the situation where you wanna be. First and foremost, a lot of people get really kind of angst or anxiety when they see this type of stuff going on. It's just a piece of paper, and we're going to show you how to take advantage of it. Stick around. In this video, not only am I going to show you how to take advantage of this, but also how to set yourself up, you and your family, for financial benefit with all of this. Stick around. We're going to got a lot of stuff to go over in this video. Now remember, like, comment, all that good stuff. The algorithm gods out there in the YouTube land, what I, I don't understand how all that stuff works, but what I do understand is that when you hit a like button and you do all, good things happen in your life, okay? Especially if you write a comment. Listen, if you have any questions on any of this stuff, please, I literally answer these all the time. So 100% of the time. So just put a comment in there and we'll go from there. So let's talk about a state tax lien on a property and why these don't really matter. So when you see a lien of any any type on the property, be it a mortgage or what have you, it's just somebody saying, hey, you owe us some money on it. Now, depending on the type of tax lien on the property will depend on the severity if there is even one on that. Okay, so let's just break it down. A property is a fixed asset that I can't pick up and move around. Okay, so it is the most secure asset that you can leverage with the banks love it everybody loves it because i don't care what you do that property ain't going anywhere so that's why there's always a big thing about okay what is the value of this property there's a big lawsuit going on right now up in new york about somebody saying they overinflated we won't say any being about who it is about their value of the property and the bank said it was worth this but if you had a trumpet you might know who i'm talking about Anyways, you know what I mean? So there's the big argument constantly. As a developer, I'm constantly saying to myself, when I'm developing a piece of land, I got other videos on that, I'm saying, hey, this thing's worth this much money. Okay, that way the, the, the mortgage or the bank, if I'm working with, with investors or whatever, they go, okay, I'm comfortable with this. I will lend you money on this particular property because it's worth this much and I'm only lending this much. Much. If something were to happen to me, they have the underlying asset to protect the bank, their investors, or whomever on that particular deal. So this is why this is the easiest lever for a state to take there. So let's say that the person has a business. Let's say that they have employees and they haven't been paying taxes of some sort. I'm going to tell you this, more so than the IRS, the state's taxes are more aggressive than anything else out there. It is a way to get your attention. That doesn't mean you can't do anything about it. Let's say I owe the state $50,000 and I have a half a million dollar property that is $300,000 in loans against the property. The state says, hey, we're going to put a lien against this property. We need you to do something. Well, it'd be really simple for me to go into a bank and go, hey, We've got this lien. Let me explain what happened because of it. Here's the value of the property. I would like to refinance to pull cash out of this property to satisfy that. That is going to be the first lever. And I'm going to tell you, if there is a good explanation as to why this happened, most lenders are going to be okay with that. Because again, they don't care about what happened over here. They want to know are we gonna get our money back? And if something were to happen to you, is this asset worth enough money for us to get our money back and then some on it? This is what happened in the whole real estate debacle back in the you know, uh, 2005, six and seven, where everybody was inflating the values of these properties and the mortgage companies didn't care and they were just lending. If you fogged up a mirror and you said the house was worth a half a million dollars, they went, yes it is, and they just signed off on it. And then it wasn't. And there was no um, uh, revenue coming from the property, all of these things, and it just collapsed on top of itself. 
Now, there are a lot of rules out there to help kind of soften that right now. Um, you get the Dodd-Frank rules and all that good stuff. That, that, that's fine. But you got to understand is that's actually helped out a lot because there is a lot of cash out into the market. What I mean by that, there's a lot of properties out there that are owned free and clear, uh, more so than at any other time in our country's history. So there are ways that you can make money on this. So that is a state tax lien on a property. Can I refinance and pull the money out of that? Absolutely. If there's a tax lien, like a property tax lien on the property, same exact thing. Just because, actually it's a lot easier even with that. If there's a state tax lien, the first thing the bank will do is to pull the information on the property. They say, well, there's a tax lien. Yeah, that's why I'm refinancing. I want to refinance on this property so I can pull cash off to pay those things off. They go, okay, we can make that happen because nothing's really happening. With a property tax lien certificate, you have to be a delinquent one year. It doesn't go against your financials. It doesn't go against your credit score. It doesn't go against anything. It's actually one of the most ethically liens out there, if you will, because it really doesn't affect anything, okay? If you don't pay it, the county just says, hey, you didn't pay it. We're going to put a lien against it, and we're going to give you some time, um, typically four to five years. And again, it's not going against your financials. I mean, think about this. Don't make a car payment and see how long that, that affects your credit or a credit card payment or a mortgage payment. Things happen immediately. Taxes on property or a tax lien on a property, you can go for multiple years without anything happening on it. So that's why when I see a tax lien on a property, I'm assuming that 99.9% .9 of the time, the property owner is going to redeem somehow, some way. Either they're going to go and refinance like we're talking about here, pull cash out to pay that off plus the, plus the, uh, the interest rate, or the property will be sold to satisfy the property taxes by somebody out there. Irrelevant to who gets it paid or how they refinance, I get paid. See, the money's owed to the county. The county's kind of saying, hey, we're not going to issue clear title on this till somebody comes in and pays the county the money. Even though that I'm the lien holder of record, the money goes through the county. They say, hey, Sean's a lien holder of record. Here's his money back, plus a big fat interest rate, which could be 18, 25, even 36% on your money. This is how all of that works. But again, taxes on a piece of property, encumbrances on a piece of property should not prevent you from refinancing. Now, here's another thing I want to like a caveat on this. If you have equity on a property and you're not leveraging that equity, you need to get educated in this area. Okay, now I don't say to go out there and take a loan against your property, a homeowner line of credit, or what they affectionately call a HELOC, homeowner line of credit, and just go, you know, go to Las Vegas or whatever. I'm talking about being able to utilize that as an investor. So if you see a property that comes up, and you want to be able to take advantage of that deal. You're like, oh my gosh, we could really do well with that. I've been watching Sean's video. I know what's going on there. I could pull some cash out of this. So you can pull cash out of that, do a deal, and put it back in. You become your own bank. I want you to think about this for a minute. If I gave you a half a million dollars cash right now, would your first inclination to go out and get a Pelican case, waterproof, put that money in that case and bury it in the backyard? No. So why would you keep equity in a property? See, there is a difference between a mortgage loan that I'm paying every single month and just having access to the equity in my property through a homeowner line of credit or a HELOC. If I don't use it, I'm not being paid interest on it. But I go out there and say, hey, I want to buy this property and I may take the money out for 12 months. Well, I've only got 12 months of payment on it. It becomes part of the structure of the deal. So as I'm pulling money out of this piece of property, leveraging it, okay, man, matter of fact, that's what I could use the HELOC to go ahead and pay off any loans or encumbrances against the property, uh, excuse me, liens or encumbrances against the property, like a state lien, like a uh, federal tax lien, and boom, you're good to go. But you want to get those paid is immediately. I want to use that money to buy other pieces of property. I want to go out there. I want to do this deal over here, make some money, become my own bank on multiple different ways. I've got other videos on using credit cards. I know Dave Ramsey hates me for this. 
okay? But if I, I literally have so many credit cards out there and when I'm doing a deal on 123 Main Street, there's a credit card dedicated to that and guess what? Everything's put on that. I look at how much it's cost me on that, that becomes part of my process of what's the cost of doing a deal on this. There's a lot going on here, okay? And there's so many ways to, to do this and, and make money. So what I'd like you to do is this. If you would like a free course on this, I've got a brand new one that'll walk you step by step. We will show you how to find the best properties out there, when, to, when these things come up for sale, what's the best interest rate, and how to get you and your family in a financial situation where you can be proud of. And this is a gift to you. All you have to do is click the link down below. It's HigginsMethod.com, and this is my gift to you, and you're on your way to make something happen immediately. This is Sean Higgins saying good luck and God bless.